Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer here at InfoBlocks, and today I'm here to walk you through InfoBlocks' Blocks 1 DDI deployment. In today's typical architecture, people are backhauling the DDI from the main infrastructure, and then the traffic is being navigated to a SaaS solution. However, this is slow and inefficient for today. InfoBlocks' Blocks 1 DDI for DNS, DHP, and IPAM is an easily deployable virtual machine or Docker container that allows you to take control of your DDI in your remote offices. And not only provides you better management for your critical resources in a central location, but also the reliability and redundancy to your branch offices while providing increased throughput to your cloud and SaaS solutions. Now let's see an overview on how to configure everything. Inside the CSP portal, once you're logged in, under Manage, we'll have a tab called On-Prem Host and another called Join Tokens. With the On-Prem Host tab, we're able to connect and configure DDI On-Prem Hosts from the cloud. Inside, we can start by adding a name, description, tags, and enable services. You're also able to search for your On-Prem Host and edit any settings inside of it. And do note that once created, you will need to go under the Applications and Services tab and enable the appliance. Now as we jump into the Join Token tab, the Join Token is an authentication key that we use to deploy our on-premise hosts and is required in order to deploy any application from the InfoBlocks Blocks 1 platform. A Join Token allows you to automatically deploy on-prem hosts without having to first configure them on CSP. This becomes more useful when deploying many on-prem hosts across the network and can save you a lot of time. Here, it is very important to pay attention as you want to make sure to copy the join token. If you don't save it, you will not be able to access it later as there is no way to access the join token again. And just to drill that point in, when I look up the join token I just created and try to edit it, there is no place to recover the join token once created. Now under downloads, you will see that there is an option to download the on-prem host as a Docker container or a virtual machine. Here I'll be showing the Docker deployment. Here, once the file is downloaded, you can begin. First, I'm logging in as sudo, just to make the deployment faster. However, do note that this isn't required. Now here, I'm navigating to the file which I've downloaded the on-prem host file in. Now I'm loading the download file as a Docker image on my Docker instance. This should only take a few seconds, however you should be able to see the newly formed Docker image once it's finished. Next, I'm running a command to run the image as a container. Do note that I use the join token here. Then, I get an output helping me confirm that the task is started with the ID of the container. But to make sure, let's look at all the running containers. Now here, when I start running the container, I inserted an additional line to view the logs as it starts up. You don't need to do this, but it can be useful if you run into an issue. Now here, I'm just looking at all the logs as the container starts up. You can hit Control c to escape, or just wait for the process to end. Once the startup is complete, you may need to wait a few more minutes, as a few more containers should start up on their own, as you can see here. Here, I'm just grabbing the IP of the Linux machine so that I can find it in the CSP. Now when we go back to the CSP, we'll see that the on-prem host was created for us automatically. Now we just need to simply enable the applications and services we want for the installed appliance. This may take a few seconds before it's ready. However, once the applications are enabled on the Docker container, you'll be able to run queries through it without any issue. Here, we can see that the new Docker images are installed onto the on-prem host, which were added as we enabled the DNS and DHCP applications. As a final note, it is recommended that you change the name of the on-prem host to something more recognizable. Now here, I'm going to show you one way for deploying a DDI on-prem host as a VM. In this case, we're using an ESXi server, and this is just one way in which you can deploy an on-prem host. Here, I'm deploying a new OVF template. 
Under the Select OVF Files, I'm creating a name for the on-prem host and selecting the on-prem host file, which I downloaded from CSP a while ago. Then here, I'm selecting the storage I want to use and then selecting the network that I want to put the DDI on-prem host on. Finally, under the last step, I'm applying the join token, as well as some other pieces of information, such as the IP, NetMask, Gateway, and also the name server. Here, you can also customize your deployment depending on your organization's needs, and nothing but the IP, NetMask, Gateway, and name server is absolutely required, as you can configure the rest later if desired. Now here, after a few minutes, the on-prem host will be loaded, and we can go to the CSP portal and see that the join token counter has gone up by one. Just like the Docker deployment, a new on-prem host has been created for us. Here, I'm just refreshing the page to confirm that the CSP can talk with the on-prem host, and now we just need to enable it. After a few minutes, the DNS and DHCP will start to work, and even if you refresh the page, it may not show up on the CSP right away. A quicker way to confirm it's been enabled is to simply test that it's been enabled with a dig request. It may take a few minutes, but eventually you will get a reply. So as a summary, Blocks one DDI is a very easy device to deploy anywhere on your network for your branch offices as a Docker or virtual machine to allow for resilience, reliability, scalability, and control of your network while providing your optimization for your branch offices. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any other concerns or questions, you can find me or any of our other experts at InfoBlox on the InfoBlox community website. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.